everybody. Welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not. Or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Shirts on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone. You let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow. 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 Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Yeah. Keep working, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm getting a little tired. Crush the head. Crush the head. You gotta crush the head. Crush the head. We gotta stomp hard. Stomp hard. Stomp hard. You're crushing it. Crushing it. Crushing it. Good 
Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Sam. want to welcome you to another online church service. Um, just a quick, pretty brief announcement, and it's pretty simple. Make sure you're using our website, discovercommunity.org. There are three things I want to highlight on there. One, there is a page for giving, which is something we are encouraging people to do, is to give online as you're able, uh, especially in this time. Two, up at the top of our homepage, you'll see a red bar that says coronavirus or COVID um, updates. That's basically where we'll put any announcements in case people missed emails or something on Facebook. And then three, as we're coming up on Easter with Passion Week, we'll be posting daily devotionals and thoughts as we walk through Passion Week and we see what Jesus was experiencing and the conversations he was having. Um, so make sure you're checking out our website for giving, for information, and especially in this week of Easter for devotionals and thoughts. If you will, please join me as we pray to start this service. We'll get some music from our worship band, and then Pastor James will bring the message today. And we'll wrap up with communion, which we're excited for a chance to do in our homes with our families. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you um, which really, God, we have that opportunity and that call and that charge every day. So that's my prayer for us this morning is that, yes, this would be a beautiful time of worship that's pleasing to you, but that we would carry that spirit of worship with us in every moment uh, of our days, that every every second you would remind us to be praising you and celebrating you. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
thankful for your forgiveness. We are thankful for your love. We're thankful that you can be with us as we're spread apart. Um, you are bigger than one building, and we just thank you for the church. We thank you for all you're doing in the middle of this. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Well, hey there, guys. It's Pastor James, and uh, I'm going to be sharing with you this morning the message. Um, and it's actually it's not going to be as long as usual. I'm not going to keep you here uh, for an hour or more, uh, because this morning's message is going to be learning a little bit more about the word bread. And we're going to finish this morning's service with communion. So you can already be preparing for that now, preparing your minds, your hearts, uh, you may even have to go run to the kitchen and go grab some grape juice um, and crackers, whatever you have, um, to represent those elements. So be preparing yourself now for it. And uh, we're going to be looking at Numbers uh, chapter 14 and then also John chapter 6. And I want to look at the two different uses of the word bread. I My preparation for this was mainly just to give a more insight to communion. But as I started researching and, and doing my studies, I found myself on this same topic. It seems like every time I go to preach, God convicts me a little bit uh, about this battle that we all have. All of us have our own battles. Um, but I, I want to show you in Numbers chapter 14 what I mean by that. So the purpose of my message to you right now is to prepare you and I, all of us, to partake in communion at the end of this message. And then also, I'm going to share with you that what God has just taught me. Um, the, his word doesn't come back void. Anytime we read it, study it, we're going to learn something 
um, about him. And then also, um, every single message is about proclaiming Jesus. And we're going to learn about what he says about the word bread also uh, towards the end of this. So let's go to Numbers chapter 14. Uh, But before I do that, let me pray for you. God, I thank you for each person that is watching right now. God, each of us are are faced with something unique um, as a battle that we have. I think of all the teachers right now that are adjusting to using technology to, to do their job the way they've never had to do before. I think of the, the, all the extra hours they're putting in to, to do that and to still serve these kids well. I, I, don't, I don't know any teachers that just got into this to, to get a paycheck. It's not an easy job. So I, think, I thank you for those teachers. I thank you for all the people that are in the health field um, that are really um, putting themselves out there um, to, to take care of those who are sick uh, while also um, being in, in an environment where they may be susceptible um, to getting sick. And I thank you for all those people that are, are still working day in and day out um, to keep really our lives um, safe. I thank you first and foremost, God, that, that we can count on you to provide for us. We can count on you to protect us. And I think of all the moms and dads right now that have kids at home and, that, and they're trying to still work and they're, they're now trying to homeschool and things are very different. God, be with us. Help us. Help us love each other well. And help us serve you in this season, in this, these battles that we're in. Help us serve you, but also look to you as our source of strength. Because we know you'll provide for us. Amen. So uh, I want to look at Numbers chapter 14. And really we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 9. Uh, I'll go ahead and read those for you. Um, I, I may be able to put them on the screen afterwards. So if they're not on here, um, you can just listen to me or read along at home. Um, and again, the, the context of this story is that the Israelites have come to the border of Canaan and Moses is sending spies out to go check out the land before they enter, um, and to actually bring some of the, the fruit back to see what the produce is like. Um, when they come back, they get two different reports and, uh, they get one report that's bad. And that's actually the majority of the, the people who went out. Now it says spies, but that could actually just be translated a, num- a number of ways, but really just to know that their job was to go out, check out the land, come back, and give report of what it's like. Now, what they found was that not not only was it actually great land, um, there was plenty of vegetation, plenty of um, food there for them to eat. There was one problem, though, is that there were giants in the land. Uh, there, there were people there that actually was a threat to them. If they were to go and try to take over this land, if you looked at it outside of God providing victory, they would have been decimated immediately because of the large armies that they had and actually the physical size of these people. Um, so they, the people who saw this and were, and were driven by fear came back and gave bad report to Moses. And that was the majority of them. But only two came back with a positive outlook of this journey and uh, we're trying to convince Moses to continue on because God is on their side, so they have no reason to fear. They can go on, they'll conquer, they'll get the land that God has promised. So let me read Numbers 14, 5 through 9 for you. It says, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land... They tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, The land which we passed through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he'll bring us into this land and give it to us. A land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. And that is the portion that I wanted to focus on a little bit uh, is that Caleb says that this battle that they're getting ready to go into, these people are bread to them. 
Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. God has provided for the Israelites through every transition. Um, they were fed under Pharaoh, and they were fed in the wilderness, and he was going to feed them in the promised land also. And I, I can sometimes relate to the Israelites, honestly. They, they, they make so many mistakes, but so do we. And sometimes we are driven by fear in our decisions that we make because we, we neglect to remember what God has already done in the past for us. So even though they went through all these different phases of their, their history as Israelites, God had always provided for them. They had always provided food for them. I'm reminded of a baby, and when a baby's hungry, it cries out, and the, mother, the mother's body actually begins to produce what the baby needs. And I feel like that's a little bit of a picture of how God responds to us when we're truly in need. It's in His nature to provide for us. He has everything that we need. And just like the baby that cries out, we can cry out to God when we truly need Him, when we truly need His help, when we truly need His um, provision for our lives. He will provide for that. It's in His nature to do it, just as the mo in mother's nature to provide for the baby. It is the same way. And I, I think it's a beautiful picture of when we are in a need and, and we're just in despair, God has exactly what we need. Caleb says that this battle is their bread. This, I, honestly, when I was researching this, I found it very difficult to find any commentaries, um, any different translations that provided any more insight into this. Why would Caleb use the word bread? Uh, in all the other illustrations he could have used, the metaphor to, to convey his point to Moses and to all these people, that they need to continue to go into this land, why would he say that they are bread for us? What does he mean by that? What he means is, um, I actually found this in a Matthew Henry's commentary. Uh, it was one of the very few things I could find. Basically, it's they are set before us rather to be fed upon than to be fought with. Isn't that beautiful? You think of all the battles we go through, all the, the situations we go through. I know some of us right now, and I can relate to this, that when you're stuck at home, um, it's, it's not inside your nature to be home and, and not to be out with people, um, and even out with your kids and doing things when you're limited, it's not always easy. I know some of you, your battles look a lot different than mine. That's, that's normal. Each of us have our own battle. Caleb said that their battle was bread for them. But if we look back with the Israelites, I think we can get a little bit better picture on what he meant by that. They had escaped Egypt. They had come across the sea. God provided the bread. Even though the bread was coming from Pharaoh before, now they're away from Pharaoh and on their own, God continued to provide what they needed. Each new battle that came their way, he was always providing for them. So Caleb knew. Caleb knew God. Caleb knew the nature of God. That, hey, you know what? God told us to go here. This is a good. This is the promised land. He will provide for us. This battle is not just for us to fight with. He's already fought the battle. Are you beginning to get a little bit of a picture of what Caleb is trying to say? It goes on to, um, not is it to be fought with, but rather to be fed upon. Um, is with so much advantage to the Israelites, and they would actually master them. So their, their battle was to fight the giants that inhibited the land, and God promised would be theirs. So what is your battle? I could think of uh, probably a dozen things to, to go over right now, but it could be isolation. Are, are you battling truthfully right now that the fact that you've maybe been home for two or three weeks, and now we have a month that we're supposed to stay at home and, and be out as little, little as possible, are you struggling with that? That is real. Is that a battle, battle of yours? Is it stress from wearing more hats than usual right now? Because you're, you're now not just a, a, an employee and a mom, but you're also a teacher. And you're just trying to cover so many other hats that you didn't have to do before. Is that stressing you out? Is that your battle currently? You know, there's all, all kinds of other things too. I, I think about 
even listen to all these press conferences about unemployment and how the unemployment website went down because there's so many people applying for it. Maybe you're stressed out the fact that you're, you're, you have fear of your finances. I get that. Is it a fear of becoming ill? Now, I, I see some people who, who think that uh, it is neglect on the church's part um, to close. I want to reassure you something, though. Even though the church building is closed on Spring Mill Street, the church as a body, as, a, as the body of Christ, cannot be closed. And truthfully, I think in some ways... This is repositioning us as a church, as a global church, that we can actually minister to more people. Now, we've already been doing things online. That's kind of what we do already. But I'm finding people engaging a little bit more than they used to. And I'm just wondering if God is using this time to center us and reposition us in a way that we can advance the church more than what we were before. Because to be honest with you, it seems like a lot of churches and a lot of people were stuck in a routine. You go to church on Sundays, um, maybe small groups once a week, maybe a Sunday school if it's available during that time. And it was routine. I think this time is a time when people that are on the fence are going off. They're either out of the routine of going to church, so they're just going to drift off. And those who were in between and uh, were wanting a little bit something, I think those are now uh, possibly uh, actually leaning on Christ more than ever because they have to have Him. It, they can only get by with Him. I don't believe that God sent this virus to kill people on earth. This is a fallen world. Things come like this. This is not the first time that a virus has struck the, the globe but I do believe, however, that God can use these times um, and actually put battles in our life, um, or I should say use the battles in our life to make us closer to Him, rely on Him. So I know that some people, and even this is a, an issue with teenagers, during this time is they are actually more susceptible um, to sexual addictions, whether that be pornography because it's so available at home, um, and I know that I'm pretty sure I, I, this could be wrong, but I, I think some pornography websites are actually offering uh, free memberships if that person does a checkbox that they are um, staying home and it gives them premium access or whatever it is. Um, so there's no shortage of that temptation. So your battle could be um, the sexual temptations. That is very difficult. I get that. So if that's you, keep listening because I I have a little bit more to share with you about Jesus and the word bread. So when the spies went into the land, they came back and gave two reports. Uh, One was focused on the battle and the other was focused on the promise of God. So right now, as you guys are um, probably spending more time thinking and, and spending more time at home, what is your battle? I just want you to think about that, and, and I want you to have the perspective that Caleb had. Caleb had a perspective on God's promises, not the battle. There's some truth in the fact that we can't win every battle on our own. Some battles are outside of us. Some battles are inside us, and we need Jesus to heal that for us. So be like Caleb. Be like Caleb and have that promise attitude that we know that God will bring us through. That God will provide for us. God will bring us the bread that we need. Then I want to go to John chapter 6, um, 57 to 59 will be the verses that I'm looking at. It says, As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And Jesus said these things in a synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Jesus is talking to the Jews. And this is particularly interesting to them because he's giving some very um, graphic vocabulary just before this 
um, he was actually saying that those who eat of my flesh and those who drink of my blood will live forever. They didn't quite know what that meant. And truthfully, there's probably people even today uh, that don't know what that means. It sounds odd that we would say that our Savior, um, our Jesus, that one thing we do to remember him is drink his blood and eat his flesh. There's a couple of different ways you can look at communion. And uh, one of the ways that uh, other people look at it, like um, the Catholics, for instance, um, the Eucharist, uh, they, they believe that that actually becomes Christ when you partake of it. And that cleanses you of sin. Uh, and that's a continual thing you have to do. You have to go to Mass. You have to take of the Eucharist in order to stay pure. The Protestants, uh, which would be we would be considered Protestant, is going to be your Baptists and uh, Pentecostals, whatever it is. Like there's basically the Christians outside of the Catholic Church. Uh, most of them would practice at least quarterly, um, maybe yearly at the least, because uh, sometimes people just do it over over Passover and that's all. Um, but we do it. Try we try to do it once a month, um, and the reason for that is it's just to continue to remind us about the sacrifice that Jesus made. Uh, so communion, um, Jesus, he practiced communion during the Passover. Uh, I don't know if any of you ever had a Passover meal uh, to commemorate and remember that, uh, remember the, the slavery of the um, Israelites and the things that they went through. And then obviously um, Jesus with the new covenant. Uh, it's a pretty interesting meal. I would encourage you guys to look into that more if you're uh, wanting to see more of the history uh, of it. But Jesus had the first communion during Passover, um, and that was a covenant meal. It was a renewal covenant that they would have. Now, Jesus was abolishing Passover, though. Um, Jesus was abolishing the old law, and Jesus was actually uh, the new sacrifice. He was the new covenant uh, with his sacrifice, and then Jesus was the bread that the Israelites used to sustain themselves. And Jesus is the bread that we need now also. So when you face your battles, um, you need Jesus. You need Jesus as the bread. He's the one that will be with you in your battle. But you also need him for eternal life. So today we're going to take communion together. And remember that sacrifice that he made. I want to be 100% clear on this. There is no salvation provided through these elements. When you eat of this bread or, or cracker or, or whatever it is that you have right now, and when you drink this grape juice or wine, whatever it is you have, there is nothing that provides salvation for that. This is and remember it's for the sacrifice that Jesus made. Jesus was the one that did that. So when we believe in Jesus, when we confess our sins, when we turn away from our old self, that is when we are guaranteed salvation. Paul gives some insight into the manner we should use for communion. Uh, he mentions that we should examine ourselves. And also want to tell you that communion is not about having a meal. Um, actually, uh, Jesus says that um, before doing this, before having communion, um, and the reason we know that it's not about having a meal is that he says that the people should drink and have food beforehand. Um, it, it's not. I don't think it's a bad practice to have it while you're in the same group and have it maybe after a meal or something like that. The, the point is that the focus is not on eating. The point isn't to get full off of this. You're not supposed to eat so much bread and drink so much wine or grape juice that you're full off this. It's the act of remembrance that is important. So again, Paul says that we should examine ourselves. I want to go over a couple things about examining yourself uh, because they're important because this practice um, this sacrament that we have is for Christians. So here in just a minute, I'm going to put up a 60-second timer. During that 60-second timer, I want you to, one, 
Um, if you're not a Christian, I need you to make sure you're a Christian. You can do that right now, even in, in on your living room couch, or if you're somewhere else, you can do that no matter where you are at. So do this for me. Ensure you're a Christian. Have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Have you repented of your sins? If you have, then participate with us. Do this with us as a church body. The second thing is, if you have sin in your life that needs to be dealt with, do it now. Take these 60 seconds and ask God for that forgiveness. Ask God to cleanse your soul. Repent of those things that need to be taken care of, no matter what it is. Maybe it's that battle that you're in. Maybe you're battling sin. God is faithful and just to forgive those things. And then you can also um, take this time to go to your kitchen, go wherever you need to go and get those elements that you need. It could be bread, it could be crackers, um, just something to represent the bread. Jesus said he's the bread of life. And that's what this represents. Jesus is the bread, and the bread represents his body that was broken. And then as you get the wine or grape juice that you have, that represents the blood that was shed. This is a new covenant for us. This is the reason that we have the final sacrifice. Jesus took on every sin. Every sin of that day, every sin of the days ahead, and, and thousands of years later, those sins were all put on him. And I, I'm reminded of all the yeses, and I think Esther was the one that shared this with me, all the yeses that the Father gave Jesus while he was here on earth. All the things he allowed Jesus to do while he was here. But the one thing he couldn't do is when Jesus said, take this cup from me, the Father said no. And I think there's a video that probably puts this together way better than I could. And maybe we'll show that at some point. But this was a very hard thing to do. But Jesus did it anyway. Because he loved you so much. He loved me so much. So as we prepare to take communion, again, take this time to ensure you're a Christian. And if you've made that decision today, please message us. Send us a message on Facebook or email us at office at discoverycommunity.org. We would love to follow up with you and even help you along in this journey. Give you resources and pray with you. Ensure you're a Christian today, right now. And then also take the 60, 60 seconds to um, deal with that sin that may be in your life that you need to get taken care of. And then remember the sacrifice that Jesus made. Now, Pastor Sam and um, one of our elders, Dan Mool, uh, their videos will be up on the screen and they're going to kind of lead us in this. Uh, we're going to finish with a song from Matt. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of time in between um, at, just for you to meditate on this. Remember the importance. Remember that right now, as you are in a battle, just like the Israelites um, were prepared to do, just like Caleb, he said, you know, this battle that we're going to go into, this battle that's ahead of us, God is there. God is on our side. God is taking care of us. And this battle that is there is our bread. So there may be battles in your life, that you need to trust God. You need to trust God because he's been faithful so far and he'll be faithful again. That battle that you're going through will be bred for you. You will be stronger from this. You will be, um, you'll be in a position that you weren't in before. This battle will be exactly what you've needed. And then Jesus said, he is the bread of life. Jesus not only gets us through this life, he's the bread that takes us through the battles, but he's also the bread that takes us into the eternal life. And I want to take a second before we get started and pray for all of you, and then we'll transition into the time of communion. God, I thank you for the battles. 
I thank you for even the story of the Israelites and, and I thank you for Caleb's spirit that he was the one to stand up and said, you know, the land is good. God has promised us this and that battle that's ahead of us, it is bread for us. God is going to take care of us just as he did before, just as he did with Pharaoh, just as he did when we we're in the wilderness. He will do this again. Help us have that same spirit, God. Help us trust you and rely on you during these days when, when some of us may be battling things we never battled before because we're stuck at home with ourselves. Maybe we're, we're financially struggling because our jobs are shut down. God, we're, we face battles that we're, we've never faced before. We need you to be our bread. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for eternal life. I thank you for forgiveness of sin. I thank you for everything that you do for us. We are nothing without you. God, you created us to worship you, and that's what we are doing right now. I thank you for all that, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Morning, everyone. I'm going to be reading from Luke 22:19 this morning. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body given for you. Do in remembrance of me." I know that uh, our bread may look a little different from each other. Uh, it might be a, a little piece of, uh, you know, whole wheat or white bread or whatever you have. Um, it's just the fact of um, it representing uh, the body of Christ. Uh, he's the bread of life. And uh, it doesn't matter what it, uh, consistency or what it looks like. Uh, it's just the, the act of the remembrance of what Jesus did for us. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to possibly pause this video before I pray, or even as I pray. Um, just take this time to remember what Christ did for us, the sacrifice he made, um, and the life that we get out of him from him doing this, God. Uh, and uh, let's pray. God, I just thank you for the chance to uh, gather together this morning, even though it may be uh, in a, a virtual world. We just thank you for the fact that the body of Christ can gather together this morning. And uh, God, we just are so humbled by the fact that you would send your son for the ultimate sacrifice and uh, his body would be broken for us, God. The sin would be put on him and his body would be marred beyond, beyond recognition, God. And we... We can't even imagine what he went through, but we uh, partake this morning, God, and, and just remember the sacrifice that he made for us so that we may one day be in heaven with you, God. And we just thank you for that and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may partake. Matthew 26, verse 27 and 28. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. As we drink this, you may not have grape juice. You may not have communal wine. You may be drinking milk or tea or, or even water. That's not what's important. Why we do this is to remember that Jesus poured out his blood for us as an offering for our sins. I want to read a passage or two passages rather in 1 Peter. This is 1 Peter 1, verse eight, starting in verse 18. Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. And then we move forward to chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Christ's sacrifice cleansed us of our sins, but it also made available to us a life lived rightly with God, in right relationship to God. So now, before we take in the cup together, I want to invite you to join me in prayer as we thank Christ for his death and his sacrifice, and then also thank him for what he has made available to us in our relationship with him. Lord, we thank you so much for sending your son to die for us. You are perfectly just and you are perfectly loving, and we see this in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And Jesus, we thank you for bearing our sin, bearing our, our guilt and our iniquities, and bearing the punishment for us, Lord. We thank you for your blood, your precious blood that you spilled on our behalf, that was poured out so that we could be cleaned and made whole and made new. We thank you that we are healed through your suffering and wounds. And we thank you that in that sacrifice, you have made way for us to have a right relationship with God, to live righteously, to pursue the Lord, and to live as he has called us to. For both of these things, we thank you, Lord. Jesus, it's in your name we pray. Amen. Please, let's take part of the cup together.
Stained with blood so deep. 